Wallace Stegner said that national parks are the best idea we ever had, absolutely American and absolutely democratic, and they reflect us at our best rather than our worst, and I think he was right. In the National Park Service, we have an inventory and monitoring program that's tasked with monitoring specific and important natural resources in the park. So inventory and monitoring can be kind of technical terms. What does that even mean in a natural landscape? But they're hugely important to us as the people responsible for taking care of this place. So the first inventory is just that question of what's even here? That's a great question and one that we hadn't really dealt with before the inventory program came along. What plants are here? What animals? How many? Where? How has that changed over time? And that change over time gets us into monitoring. So we're responsible. Our legislation says that we have to preserve these places unimpaired for future generations. We call our program the Vital Signs Monitoring Program because it's like monitoring vital signs in humans. For example, we monitor blood pressure, pulse rate, your body temperature, cholesterol levels, your blood chemistry in order to understand what are the baseline values for an individual or a population and then when are those values going outside what you would consider normal and when you need to be concerned, when you might need to actually do something about it. So that's essentially what we do for park resources, plant communities, animal communities, understanding physical habitat and environmental conditions. We work with parks all across the country and provide them the information that they need to, to care for these special places. We can be found monitoring aquatic life in places like Haleakala National Park in Hawaii. We can be found in the heart of Washington, D.C., monitoring the forest there in Rock Creek Park. We can be found in the dark rivers flowing through Mammoth Cave National Park, monitoring the rare and endangered Kentucky cave shrimp, an aquatic organism that can be found nowhere else in the world. While we are monitoring rocky intertidal zones in Acadia National Park in Maine, at that same time, over 3,000 miles away, we have people monitoring rocky intertidal zones in Cabrillo National Monument in California. So our monitoring is tracking forests for the long term so that we can see those changes in trees that are not going to happen in 10 years, 20 years, or a human lifespan. One component of our forest monitoring is tracking the number of seedlings and small trees in the forest. And until recently, it was pretty bleak. In some parks, we saw few or no seedlings or small trees at all. Well, you know, man has removed all the natural predators that, that deer would have in a, in a park setting, uh, such as wolves, mountain lions, even bears. You know, that's led to overpopulation. Deer are an important part of our forest ecosystems in the Mid-Atlantic until there are too many of them. We've had to step in and create a management option and our management option is to remove some of the deer. We want deer in the park, they're part of the ecosystem, but we need to reduce the numbers so that we can reduce the impacts. Since we started deer management, we've definitely seen more tree seedlings, even you could even call it a flush of tree seedlings. We've found plants that haven't been found for sometimes decades in the park. We had never found the yellow fringed orchid before two years ago. So nine years ago, you would not have seen this tree seedling here. Um, this little ash would have definitely been eaten by deer. And the small trees are really important because those are our future big canopy trees. It's the future of the forest. When this park decided that one of its vital signs was to manage the island fox, to look at the top dog on the island and see what was its health. And they started inventorying, monitoring program on that particular species. And what they learned in a very short period of time, that fox was on the decline. What are we going to do? Are we going to lose a species that exists only on the Channel Islands that will be gone forever? Or are we going to intervene? And it was inventory and monitoring that told us you had to do something 
The flag went up saying something was broken, and I am proud to tell you today after monitoring of that particular species, it led to captive breeding of that species. It resulted in the reestablishment of bald eagles on the Channel Islands. Putting that whole package together, we went from an endangered species, the island fox in 2004, to being the fastest recovery of a mammal in the history of the Endangered Species Act, removed from the Endangered Species Act in 2016. All foxes are back in the wild and they're doing well. So understanding the ecology of national parks is vital to what we do. It's vital to what I do as a park manager. When I'm making decisions about how we're gonna manage the park, how we plan for the future, how we ensure these animals are here for future generations to enjoy, uh, understanding what's going on on the ground with the wildlife is absolutely critical. And that's what inventory and monitoring does for us. I think inventory and monitoring is critical in national parks. Um, we don't have a lot of data to tell us the long-term trends and that's what national parks are about, the long view. And so if we don't have data sets that go across decades, we won't really understand the up and down fluctuations of a species, of a metric, that we will with long-term monitoring. And that's critical to have as a manager. It's worth it. It's not only worth it, it's indispensable. I don't think we can be effective managers and stewards and fulfill our responsibility without that kind of data. It's such an awesome mission and I feel a heavy sense of responsibility to ensure that what we offer to the public here, what belongs to the public is sustained in good health and we want to invest our effort in things that are truly going to make a difference in the preservation of these great landscapes.